Hi everyone, I'm Nadia and in today's video, I'm casting full flowers in a resin tray and coaster set. After I mix my part A and part B resin together for several minutes, I separate it into cups to make pouring into the molds a little bit easier. And then I go ahead and pour my clear resin into the molds. I'm starting off with a thin layer, so I use a silicone makeup brush to help push the resin to the edges of the molds. And I use a torch gun to pop any air bubbles. Then I get my flowers ready, and these are all flowers that have been just left to air dry. I start placing my flowers face down into the molds. So they haven't been pressed at all, but they have been air drying for quite some time, so they are fully dry. And whenever you're casting flowers in resin, you want to make sure that they are completely dry and that there's no moisture left in any of the petals because that can result in excess air bubbles and it can also cause the flowers to rot within the resin if there's too much moisture. And I have one big rose that I'm carefully placing in. Then I just continue placing in my flowers and I also place in some flower petals as well as some eucalyptus leaves. Then I continue trying to fill in the empty space with flower petals and flower petal pieces. I come back the next day once the first layer has hardened and I mix in my resin once more. I separate my resin into a smaller cup and now I'm going to be mixing in some pigments. So I start off with using this beautiful light blue shade of mica powder by Resin Pro. And into that same cup I add in some of Casting Craft's white pigment. I'm aiming for an icy baby blue shade, but there's a lot of different colors that I think would also look very nice with these flowers, and maybe I'll try some time in the future. I separated a cup of clear resin, and I start by pouring clear resin into the molds. Then I start pouring my blue pigmented resin. And again, I use a silicone makeup brush to help spread and blend the resin. I'm using the torch gun very carefully and on a very low setting, just enough to pop any air bubbles that it comes close to, but I'm being careful not to burn any flower petals. And here I am the next day demolding. That second layer I did was still pretty transparent and that will help to see more of the flowers once I do my third layer. Now that everything is out of the molds, with my hands I try to remove as much as possible of the flowers. And to help get rid of the rest of the flowers that are bulging out, I'm going to be using this sanding tool which is so easy and convenient to use. I'll leave it linked in my description if you're interested in purchasing one just like it. 
I do highly recommend it for any sanding that you need to do on your resin pieces. So while I'm sanding, I am still using my respirator mask and gloves. And this is because while you're sanding, small particles of resin get into the air and you can easily ingest them. Once everything is sanded down as much as I could possibly do, I flip everything back onto their top side and add liquid latex. I'm adding liquid latex to protect the top side while I do a layer of resin on the bottom side so that if any resin drips over the piece, the resin won't cure onto the resin but onto the liquid latex and will be easily able to be removed. And I use a silicone makeup brush to help spread the liquid latex all the way to the edges. I pop my tray and coasters up onto cups and mix in my resin once more. I'm using the same pigments that I previously used but this time I'm using more so that it's more opaque. And here I am the next day removing the liquid latex. On some of my coasters, there is the center part of the flower that's still sticking out a little bit and couldn't be sanded down more. But once this layer of resin hardens a little bit more, I attempt to sand it a bit more. Though it's not a big deal because I did place bumpers under each coaster and the tray. Once this layer has hardened a bit more, I put the liquid latex on the bottom side of the tray to do another layer on the top so that I could add in my handles. And I'm using these really beautiful gold handles in the shape of a bird and I carefully place them onto each side of the tray. I use an adding marker to add my gold trim. While I was adding in my gold trim, I noticed an imperfection on the tray that was very deep in and I didn't notice earlier since there's so much going on with all of the flowers. So instead of trying to drill it out, I used an adding acrylic marker to add white streaks throughout the tray. This was supposed to resemble marble or quartz, but I realized later that I probably should have added in more streaks and also added in white streaks with resin while I did my top coat, but it still gives an interesting look. Then I did a top coat to seal everything in, and I did the same with my coasters. I put the white streaks on one set of four of the coasters so that it matches with the tray, and I left the other four coasters as they were and sold them separately. And here's the final product.
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, subscribe to see more videos like this in the future. Follow me on my Instagram, Summer Girl Designs, and my mom's Instagram, Wild Heart Resin Art.